Let's say I wanted to test for interaction effects in a model like this with feedback, participation, satisfaction with customers, and satisfaction with work. First, I need to start in SPSS. What I need to do first is standardize the variables of interest. So you go to descriptives and descriptives, save standardized values as variables, and then go find those, var those variables. That was satisfaction with work, satisfaction with customers, feedback, and participation. And then just hit OK. What will happen is you'll see you'll get four new variables here, all standardized versions of the variables you already have. Now you need to calculate uh, or produce your product term or your interaction effect. So you go to transform, compute variable, we're going to make it part underscore times feed. Now there can't be any spaces or uh, mathematical or equation terms in here. No, no multiplication, subtraction, addition, nothing like that. No parentheses. And then we need to create uh, the expression here to um, compute that variable. So it's just participation, the standardized participation times the standardized feedback. All right, hit OK. Once again, a new variable is created right here. And um, we can now go into Amos. But first, I'm going to change these variable labels. I don't like the labels. They're really long, so I'm just going to get rid of them. Otherwise, in Amos, it ends up showing the label, and the variables are enormous. OK, we need to save first, very important, and then go over to Amos. Pull in that data, <clears throat> oh, actually I put it somewhere else, here it is, hit OK, once it's loaded, there we go, alright, and start building. So, oops, here we go. Okay, we need to go to the very bottom. Oh, bother, it's giving me trouble. There it is. Okay, pull all these in. And arrange accordingly. So, satisfaction with work, satisfaction with the customers, participation, feedback, and the interaction term. <clears throat> Regress. Error terms. Covary. Name error terms. Make everything look pretty. Hmm. And adjust accordingly. There we go. And then save. We'll call this interaction. And let's run the model. Oops, sorry. Oh, actually, we'll get standardized estimates, squared multiple correlations, modification indices then run. Alright, the first thing we want to do is go to our output estimates and we're going to start trimming starting with the interaction effects here. So this one is highly insignificant that's interaction to sat C. We can go ahead and get rid of it. Interaction to sat C right here. And make this a little bigger. There we go. And then you run it again. You only delete one at a time. Looks like that last interaction effect is significant, so we can't delete it. We can now start on the non-interaction effects. Looks like feedback to SATC is not significant. Now, because um, there is no interaction effect on satisfaction with customers, we are permitted to delete this insignificant effect. 
let's say, for example, um, just as an illustration, that this line here, feedback to set W, was insignificant, we would not be allowed to delete it because there is an interaction effect going to satisfaction with work. Hope that makes sense. All right, we run again. We should be all significant now. We are. Now we attend to model fit. So go to model fit. Our semen over df is terrible. Our p-value doesn't exist. Our GFI is fine. CFI is terrible. Our MSEA, terrible. P-close, no good. So let's go to our modification entities to see where the problem is. Ah, look at this, huge. Looks like E1 to E2 needs to be covariate. We can't do that. This is a structural model. We would do that in a CFA. In our structural models, we need to create regression lines or remove variables. So what we'll do is, looks like these are actually the same thing. They're just very highly correlated. So we will create a regression line from satisfaction with customers to satisfaction with work. This will account for that uh, discrepancy. We run the model again, view the output, look at our model fit. Ooh, fabulous. Look at that. Ooh, we even have a p-value, which means we have not bad fit. Um, CFI is great. GFI is perfect. We go down here, RMSEA and p-close. Perfect. Awesome. We have great model fit. Now we go back to our estimates, make sure they're still all significant. Go to the top. Yep, they're still all significant. The next thing to do is to plot this interaction effect. We only plot significant interaction effects, and they're the only ones left in our model, so that makes it easy. To plot this, we go to the Interaction Plotter tool. Here we go, right here. And what we'll do is we'll enter our variable names. So independent variable was participation. The moderator was feedback. And the dependent variable in this case is satisfaction with work. It's the one that has the interaction effect uh, regressing on it. So in this case you see it's from here to here. Alright, now we need the effects. Excuse me. We push the up arrow here. We get the unstandardized estimates. So from our independent variable to the dependent variable, it's 0.13. For the moderator to dv, it's 0.2, and then 0.13 for the interaction effect. So 1, 3, 2, and 1, 3. 0 0.13, 0 0.1, oops, 0 0.2, excuse me, and 0.13. All right, the constant, we can just leave constant at 3. It just moves the um, graph up and down, you can see. So it does us no good to change it. All right, now we just have to be able to interpret this. The interpretation is that for low moderating, for low moderation, oh, well, for low moderation, there isn't much of an effect from participation to satisfaction with work. But when you add feedback into the model, um, you get this s positive slope. So participation has a stronger effect on satisfaction with work when the employees are receiving feedback. And that's it. For more help on interpreting uh, the various types of plots you'll get, um, refer to StatWiki interaction. There's a um, there's there are four different types of interactions you can interpret out of this and it explains each one.